two, I'm back with my lovely Auntie Ethel. Uh, we're having a conversation about uh, all things Reiki, all things healing, and uh, all of the amazing experiences that we've had over our, well, my years of nine years and Ethel's 40 years of experience. So <laughs> I remember when we were, when I was doing a session there in, in, in the healing room, and um, I got used to what was coming, you know, in the exercises, what the problem was with the lady, so what are the man, you know, and I knew what exercise was coming next, whether it was yeah. the shoulder, the, the leg, or taking the leg out there, and, and they'd be amazing. They would be yeah. amazing. But well, these exercises was very slow. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, you don't think I've got all day. I've got people queuing up to come in. <laughs> so, and I just remember saying this, say, I mean, it really goes slow, but they were teaching me, well, we're here, we're going to be like it. Yeah. Interact. So I says, uh, I don't know, you know, got a woman waiting in the kitchen, there's one out in the port. Uh, get a move on, please. Are you? Have we got all day? Well, like yeah. this. Because that's how I do. I always talk to them, yeah. speak to them like that. Because you would, if that was your mate, slacking, you'd yeah. tell her, wouldn't you? <laughs> so, <laughs> they did. And all of a sudden, as soon as I said it, you know where the where the where the legs was going like this, yeah. You know, like I can't you can't even see it on the screen, but do you know what I mean? Don't you? Yeah. Apply the, the legs do this like real fast. Da, 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 yeah. Da. Well, then it would. It's like somebody's tuned up the you know, and only go. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. But obviously, for other people out there who don't, um, who've never had an experience of Reiki, it doesn't happen like that for everyone. I promise no, you. you know, no, people, no. people have come to me. I have lots and lots of clients who come and are still as a board on the bed and they don't move at all and just wake up and they feel absolutely amazing. They feel like they've had a week's sleep. They feel yeah, so light. Yeah. When they're on that bed and they've dropped off, they've gone out of their body. Yeah. And like, and so it's not something that movers doesn't happen for everybody. So just in case that people get frightened, they think, oh my God, I'm not getting up on her bed because I'm going to, my leg is just going to be up over my shoulder before, before I can say boo. Okay, so they would never ever do it if they didn't know that they could handle it. Yeah. So if somebody gets movement, even a slight movement, the guides are doing that because they know on another level that she can hack it, she can yeah. handle it. Yeah. And so then you push it. So the next time they come, it'll look a little bit more, a little yeah. bit more. No, they've never frightened anybody. And, and it's, and it's it. exactly as you said, you know, you, you again, again, like the same with me, they built me up over time. I got that girl who the leg started to move, then the other leg started to move, then the next. So you, you sort of know what's the, the, the sequence of what happens. Either the legs start to do this, and we always call it happy feet, and these legs start to bang together like this. Yeah. And then, then the, and then the arm starts to go. And then yeah. you get the other arm, then you start seeing the arms. And you know that on a, on a, on a, if you're looking at it as a, as a practitioner standing over the person that's on the bed, you, you can see how they're moving the body, like exactly as and it's like, like. Like rolling the shoulders and rotating the shoulders and yeah. stretching them over this way. And yeah. Oh. And you know that they're doing physio on them, but the person yeah. that's on the bed, you know, doesn't, you know, you know by how their face looks that they don't look as if they're in pain in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. And, and sometimes you get them where they roll and they make a sound and go, oh, oh. And I say to, your, say to your guides that that hurts me, step back a little bit. And, the, and then all of a sudden, then they, they move, they start moving the legs and they don't, they don't go near the arms. So the more, and it's actually sometimes, as you said, oh, I have yeah. to guides, you just have to tink it. I've often just taught it in my head. Oh, guys, that might be a bit too much for her. And then the guys stop moving the arms and they go straight to the legs. Yeah. And we've, yeah. And we've obviously seen so much of this. And I know for people out there who have never um, experienced movers in any shape, way, shape or form. One of the things I only noticed, um, saw recently on Netflix, there was a Netflix program called The Goop Lab. And uh, it, was, it was done with Gwyneth Paltrow, the actress. Oh, I'm not seeing it. Remember that? It was a blogging. It was like, it's just like a blog that she has. And I think it was like series four or series five, they had this doctor on who was a kinesiologist. And he yeah. said, I think that the world is ready to see this. And he was basically standing over them like he was if he was the puppet master. We were doing it 30 years ago. Doing exactly what we do in Reiki. But now he's like saying, I, I think the world is ready to see this now. If you had saw that on television 30 years ago, we'd all have thought that that girl was possessed by something. Yeah. You know, because that was the thinking that we were in. We were in that well, you know, well, you know, yeah, other people would have been thinking like yeah, that. Yeah. But once, once you, you know, you're, you're learning to trust and go with what your instincts and everything else and all the exercises that you have seen and the people that have got better and stuff like that, that you don't worry about what other people think. That's the trouble with people. Yeah. You, once you get rid of that fear of what anybody else thinks, yeah. you know, because you're holding yourself back. 
yeah. I got into that stage where it was like, bring it on, come yeah. on. I want to give them a good session and I want to do my, my best for this person. Yeah. And uh, and if she doesn't come back, tough, sorry, whatever. We yeah. always came back, every single one of them. And, and, and again, that's as well what we, we, we teach our, our, our students that every single thing that you're get you're you are given by your guys is like little bits it's like you know the the constant dropping of the war or, or it's like as um Dolores Cannon says you don't give a baby fill a steak you give a baby milk so it's bit by bit by bit so it teaches you so now I understand my journey of having those two students on that weekend yeah. was because I couldn't handle anymore on that weekend because I was going yeah. to have her channeling and doing a, a, a speaking um, in tongue that, that girl, that client that I had, I was going to have that experience. So I would have been, I was, I remember feeling in my body, oh my God, what is this? So I would have been totally thrown off that weekend if I had a seven or eight people. So they just gave yeah. me those two clients just to give me bit by bit. And just build it up and build it up. Build it up. Yeah. And I mean, here, here we are. I mean, you're 40 years doing, I'm only, you know, um, since 2012, physically teaching people how to do it. And like when we see those years, I'm like eight, nine years <laughs> doing it. The amount of experience that we've had, of, I've had in nine, nine years, I know the amount of experience that you've had in your years. And like we, as people say to me, how do you know all this? And I'm only nine years at it. How do you know all this information, all this less, all these um, books that I've read, all the information that I've absorbed all through my learning. And we know that we're only scratching the surface of the tiniest amount of information yeah. that even though we think we've loads, is only yeah. a tiny amount from what is out there. That's right. I mean, you're only getting, as you said, you're only getting what you can handle. It's, it's, if they'd have given me a lot of the books 10 years ago, what I'm reading now, I wouldn't, I'd have I'd thrown them to one side because I wouldn't have been able to understand them. Yeah. Now I'm like, it's like the, what, the, the light switch going on, you know. Yeah. Unbelievable yeah. what you understand and what you're, um, and what we're capable of and, uh, the amazing vast spiritual beings that we are and when you've had that proved to you as well when yeah. you've seen stuff the most amazing spiritual stuff well nobody can tell me you could hold a gun to my head and say uh you know either you know stop teaching that and stop saying that and what have you you know yeah. uh, as far as i'm concerned uh we're divine beings we're god in physical bodies uh having the human experience came in here to experience every emotion, every torment, every terror, uh, to be on the receiving end, to, to be the doer. Yeah. And that's what people can't get their head around, you know. Oh, yeah, it's okay being oh, on the receiving end as in uh, all the nice things. But uh, when you turn around and say, yeah, but in other lives, you've done all sorts. We all have. We've all been men and women. Yeah. So you've had to experience the one that's killed. You've had to experience being killed. Yeah. You've had to ex experience, well, you know, yourself. Yeah. Um, you can't have one without the other and yeah. that's the only way that um, God experienced all that through the human form, God like I say it's not person, it's energy yeah. takes on a human form like all of us yeah. and um, like, do you, do you think that you you, um, you know we, we have had this conversation before like that even though there's say for instance you going back to the length of time that you're doing it you i would see you being the first wave of volunteers that came in to be the way showers that were sort of yeah. spark off people to get them to understand it in a different way and then like i would be the second wave of volunteers who are it's very um known now there's lots of reiki practitioners lots of healers holistic healers out there who are not afraid to teach it in a different way you don't have to worry about that book because they're not living in a climate of bigotry and uh, what have you you know judging. Um, because back then, I was classing that absolute nutcase, and yeah. you knew people were laughing up the back, but I couldn't have given it to us. Yeah. But if only you knew, yeah. you know, I, you just didn't have a clue. And I, again, I put that down to ignorance. But um, when uh, it all started happening for other people, yeah. and I go, told you. Yeah. told you what did I say what did I say yeah. but then all the stuff that I was teaching 25 years ago and 30 years ago about uh, all the beings around the planet they're all coming to see the greatest show on earth which is now yeah um 2021 20 you know yeah. um the greatest show on earth coming from all over the universe yeah and every every civilization you can imagine all uh, giving us their help uh, lots of people are, you know, oblivious to what's going on. It's all going on now. But it's funny. And they are volunteers as well, the ones yeah. that 
that's coming. But I saw that uh, one of the memes out there, maybe last year when we we're all in the experience of the COVID experience, and one of the memes was all these little kid aliens, you know, standing behind the curtain going, oh God, we're next. Because, because it's like, this is what they're going to frighten us with next. When oh, people out there understand that it, these uh, higher dimensional beings have been with us all of these thousands of years that we are on this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've been over there in other times, in different lifetimes where we've experienced living on those planets. But that's very hard for somebody who's only a newbie, only been awakened in the last year to understand. What do you mean? Yeah. What? There's other beings out there? It's very yeah. hard to understand that. Yeah. I always, when, I'm, when I was teaching, I always, always say to people on a regular weekend, you know, I was born in, into a family, a massive family of 15, you know, 15 children, mom and dad. And I used to say, you know, why did I pick this family? Why did I, you know, what kind of a family is it? You know, I was in the middle, so I was number nine, number yeah. nine. And uh, and what? And I was always, why, why? And always poor and always had nothing. And yeah. But you have to go through all these things to understand how other people feel later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and it wasn't until um, later on that when I learned all of this, you know, that every member of that family that you chose you chose uh they're all at different levels their frequencies at different levels they're they're so they're all at different levels of learning and so um so you you could look around your family and say now there's the old soul the young soul young soul is one of them that's mine me mine and your own yeah yeah you know selfish and all the rest of it and then the the, 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 uh, the more mature soul is yeah you know learned lessons like that so it just goes on from there you, you can pick them out in your own family yeah. so and uh, and the the spiritual ones and the other ones that's helping other ones up frequency wise you know yeah. and um it's amazing it's the same with the world yeah with the people. Like the people yeah how, how people resonate with each other and i think that especially the experience that we went through in the last year people um you know the especially the um obviously the whole thing with the pandemic and all of that, there's people out there who go, oh my God, it's a scam, it's a this, it's a that. And then there's other people who are like, what are you talking about? So there's, there's the conspiracy theorists and the ones who believe everything that they're being fed through the televisions. And then that problem then is that you might have somebody in your family that is totally on the other end of the spectrum to what, what you believe, but that's the yeah. whole thing about learning. So you cannot have that judgment yeah. to each other. It's that's right, and that's your challenge. And that's your it's challenge, your yeah sit back and watch them learn yeah and i mean you know obviously everybody uh we're all on our own spiritual journey we all have um again as you said the old soul and the and the mature soul or the old soul the old the ancient soul soul. the ancient (laughs) ones but that's in a a way that the but the they've evolved they've spiritually evolved because they came down here thousands and thousands and thousands of lifetimes that they learned each life that they came in they learn those lessons. So when the time they come into our experience with us, they already have that knowledge. It's like, yeah. it's like say for instance, with me and my family, I have eight siblings and I taught my mom all about Jesus. She didn't teach me just because she was mm-hmm. the parent. It doesn't mean because you're the parent, you know it all and you teach the child. Hey, Sometimes you do. It's the other way around. Both. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, <laughs> and then here we are and I look at my own children and I, I try to get my children to question everything because we were taught when we were growing up that you don't question the priest. You don't yeah. question anything. You don't have yeah. to think for yourself. You're being taught this way and don't think outside the box. Yeah, that's where I got into trouble. Of- I know. That's where but I like, used to do this. But see, you did, you did that, you know, 40 years ago, 40, 50 yeah. years ago. And I am I got into trouble and I'm, I'm ahead of you. But now the newbies that are coming yeah. in, all the new souls, all the younger ones who are coming in, they're able to step out forward and be able to speak how they want to speak, speak their truth, question things, and not feel that it's, you know, oh no, I'm not allowed because if I say this and I'm outside the umbrella of the church or I'm outside the teachings of the school or whatever it is, that I, I'm, I'm going to get into trouble for it. There's no, there's a feeling of being able to be that, have that freedom to be able to speak, where it's evolving each generation, which is a good thing. What a lot of people don't understand um, is it, we're in the Great Awakening. And what the Great Awakening is, is the remembrance of who you are. Because when we come into the body, where we've come from, because otherwise you'll never learn anything if you're being told the answers, you know. So yeah. we had to go through all the horrors of hell 
And again, there's another one, the horrors of hell. You've heard that saying, uh, heaven and hell. Well, this is it. If you want to call a place where the suffering, this, you'll never find another place like this because you look around the planet, you look at what's happening to the children and the, I'm not talking about all the trafficking and everything. I'm talking about all the other, long before all that, you know, the, um, the, the suffering, the starvation, the this, the that. And what people don't realize is every soul has chosen to come here. And they clamor to go to be born into places like that because there's a, they experience everything, poverty, uh, going without, uh, lack, love, they've experienced all of that, yeah. uh, less of, you know. Um, and if you were to look around on the other side, they'd be queuing up to, to be born into dire circumstances. Whereas if you went along and everything's all nice and rosy, what's the point? Yeah, what, what would you from? learn? You wouldn't learn what very you, much. Or yeah. you'd be learning very slowly. Yeah. But like I said, um, but the great awakening is a remembrance of when the penny dropped and you remember who you are, this divine being, the Christ within you, um, every single person on the planet is a divine being, uh, every animal, Every, anything that's got energy in yeah. is all God having that experience. Yeah. I mean, right down to an ant. Yeah, or right down to a rock or a stone. People go, no, stone exactly. is not living. I'm like, yeah, it's living. Yeah. Yeah. The consciousness of spirit. Yeah. And um, so when, uh, when, that, when you understand that part, uh, it's, it's called the Great Awakening, remembering who you are. And everywhere you look now, once, once you get a, a little taste of that, like we're sowing the seed when people are listening. They're sowing the seed and they might not understand it now, but they will yeah. six months down the line. And um, it's it's when you get it, when the penny drops. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just, uh, it, you know, I, I've seen it over the last, uh, especially in the last 12 months or so, it's, it's, it's like a quickening. It's happening so fast. I see people that have never had any Reiki done, have never, even like some of my students who've just, um, clients who've just come for maybe one or two Reiki sessions, are messaging me saying, I'm hearing things. I'm seeing people's auras. And they haven't been attuned to Reiki as like some of my students who had yeah. been level two, level one, level two, and masters, and then started to get all of this as their frequency raised up. It's They're happening all, to everybody. It's happening to everybody. And, I, 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 and it's the same explanation that I, well, I suppose you have a um, similar experience to it, that I, I remember having um, a meditation last year where the guides gave me the analogy of me being a, a bunch of balloons and the balloons having lots of weights on it so as we get rid of a weight being an emotional experience or a trauma or something that we've gone, gone through that in our life that we've lived as we get rid of that weight the balloons lift up and as the balloons lift up they move out of the 3d the third dimensional energy that we're in at the moment and it moves into the 4th d the 50, fifth, fifth dimension and as you move into those that frequency of energy into the fifth dimension, all of the light codes start to switch on and all of the stuff that you used to do, maybe when you were in a fifth dimensional being or a fifth dimensional planet and you were yeah. able to, uh, you know, um, telepathically speak to somebody, you were able to see. Everybody color. has that ability. Yeah. Behind the scenes, everybody has yeah. all, all the power of God, isn't it? Yeah. And some people are just being awakened to that instantly without even having a Reiki attunement. So it's amazing yeah. to see as somebody like me and you who have both watched people going through their experiences through their Reiki level one, two and three, where people are now just awakening because they're putting their foot, feet onto the crystalline grid of the ground and automatically being awakened. So it's amazing how fast it's happening. And isn't it amazing when people say to you, um, well, what it is, you know, um, I had this experience where I felt as though I'd gone out on my body and, and they, they feel embarrassed saying it. I'm like, and? Well, uh, and I felt as though I'd gone out on my body, I thought, and uh, I travelled. I said, no, you did. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're speaking about as it's the norm, which it is to us. Yeah. But it's, can you imagine the first time it happens to them? Yeah. Uh, out of the body or um, the other one was um, when we'd be teaching on the Reiki weekends, all the spiritual stuff, because we always kept that separate, didn't we? Yeah. to actually teaching about the, the Reiki. That, that, was, that was the most special part of the Reiki weekends to me was the spiritual side of it. Because yeah. that's when they were awakening up to who they are, what they're here for, the sacred contracts and why, why they're here. Just one of the um, questions I'd love to know, um, 
what over the 40 years of your teaching and healing uh, your experiences what was the most uh, standout experience that you had that you had to sit back afterwards and go oh my god did that just happen can you remember anything that you I mean I know you have many 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 experiences but can you remember something that still is sit, sits with you other than the Patsy experience that we had the girl that was in the um hospital with you that time is there anything uh, that you remember from the top of your head that would be one of your most memorable ones well the first of all the ones that stand out to me is uh, all the reiki babies yeah. you know, all the women the women that came that couldn't get pregnant and um you know um had gone down the ivf route done everything and nothing was happening some one was waiting for like 14 years you know yeah and came for reiki and i was explaining everything to her and uh, and I was explaining about it. everything you put out there, act as though it's going to happen, you know. Yeah. Um, so they'd come for a few sessions and I'd explain a lot of stuff to them. And uh, you've got to act as though it's going to happen and get some, as though it's going to happen, get something for the, the baby's room. Where's the baby going to sleep? You know, yeah. things like that. Um, what you believe and- you receive. It's like getting them to t- change their thoughts in their head. Like, oh, I'm just, I just know my period is going to come. I, that's always what you get from the, those type of clients, you know. Well, the words are very, very powerful. So yeah. every time you speak, you're ordering up for what you want. So every time a person should say, well, what it is, Ethel, I just know I'm going to get a period. I just know it. it's never going to happen. I said, let me stop you right there, love. It won't. Yeah. Because you are ordering up from the universe. Here we are into the law of attraction, you know. What you put out there is very, very powerful words. And it's like ordering up from the universe. I, uh, I am going to get a period. So the universe is saying, here you are. You can have everything you want. Yeah. Here you are. And so then she's surprised at the end of the month, you know, when she does have one. Yeah. Or um, I just know it's not going to happen. I just, I just know. So I said, you're telling your body all the time that you just know that it's not going to happen. So your body's saying, oh, she doesn't want a baby. Yeah. I said, so... What are you doing, you know, with this, um, you know, towards it? Like, uh, are you getting uh, ready for it? And she said, how do you mean? Well, where's the baby going to sleep? Yeah. Box bedroom. And what's in your box bedroom? Uh, my dogs are my rubbish. Yeah. Now, what's, what sort of signal are you giving the universe? I'm not ready. Yeah. You start as you mean to go on. Tell them. You show them, you know, I'm decorating a room. I'm getting me cut in. Like years ago, I remember in Ireland, you used to say, don't get a cram, don't get it. It's bad luck. Yeah. All this rubbish. Yeah. You know, well, every time you said that, you, you wouldn't. Yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? You're yeah. putting it out there to the universe. Yeah. So, uh, so I'd say focus on doing a test and it's positive. Imagine it. Your imagination is the power. Imagine seeing that uh, positive. Then they imagine yourself getting bigger. Stand in front of the mirror and put a cushion up your jumper. I used to get them all to do that. Yeah. Push a cushion up your jumper and, and see what you're going to look like when you get pregnant. And uh, do your, your decorating in the baby's bedroom. And the, the last thing is buy something that you want to associate with the baby. A pair of booties or a little picture for you on the, on the cot, you know. And they're like, okay, that's a new one on me. I said, yeah, as you saw, you read out there yeah and um well they all got pregnant bar one and um so there's i don't i i keep saying there's 145 but it could be 165 plus count yeah you know. i used to have them all i could visualize them saying to me ethel um you're not going to believe this and they, they were the famous last words you're not going to believe this because i always knew what they were going to say <laughs> i'm pregnant it's positive and, and i've some you did the first one to know even before a husband. Because I remember even my experience of that with you at Reiki Babies. You were always talking to me about Reiki Babies. People coming to me yeah. and get pregnant, IVF, and yes. they got pregnant. And then I had my experience where I came to you in the, um, I only yeah. met my husband. I was only going, go, going out with Martin because we were a whirlwind um, relationship. I only met Martin in the April, in the 1st of July, I was engaged. And by the time uh, I was pregnant was was the October, right? So the October yeah. I realized I was pregnant, right? But I remember coming to you in my Reiki level one and um, it had my le- level one. And then in the midst of level one, level two is the six months the, I got when I got engaged. And I sent you over the photograph of myself and Martin, you know, I'm engaged in a party. And you said, yeah. 
the picture fell down on the ground, off the, off, off the table onto the ground. And you saw it one day underneath your bed and you were like, oh, geez, that's where that picture went. And I'll sure I'll put it up there on me Reiki baby board. Oh, the babies. <laughs> yeah. And you put me in, in the middle of the, in the middle of the baby board with Martin with all these babies around. And then I came to you, which was, I remember I did my Reiki level two on the 29th of October, 2006. <laughs> And when I came over, I said, I remember ringing you the night before saying, Ethel, I don't think I'm going to be able to come because I'm pregnant. You were like, well, that's brilliant. Yes, that's amazing oh, yeah. news. Oh, this is the best thing for yeah. you. And when I came over the that next day, I said, I said, there I am. I said, what? And she goes, my Reiki baby board. And I was like, it was you. It was your fault. I'm going to blame you. Because there I was yeah. in the middle of the Reiki baby board, never even expecting I was going to get pregnant. Gee, because it wasn't even, even on our minds. But, you know, uh, no coincidences there. It was meant to happen that way. But it's, I have had those experiences like you where people have come IVF, IVF, IVF and not been able to have yeah. that baby. And I, I just say to them as well, you know, the uh, putting the picture of a scan, print off a picture of somebody else's scan and put that on your fridge. So every time yeah. you go to your fridge and you open your fridge because you do that all day, every day, getting your milk out for your tea or whatever, you keep seeing that picture. So it keeps reminding you or on your phone, you put your phone, your screenshot on your phone of a scan, even though it's not yeah. your scan, but it gets you your thinking and your cells are listening. To let them know that you're ready, talk to your womb, let your womb know that That's you're ready right. to have that baby. And it's yeah. amazing. I mean, I have again, same like you. I've only got one girl who didn't get pregnant, even though had come to try to get pregnant. It was a little bit later on, and, and, I, and this whole thing of oh, I'm too old, or I'm getting to the time of oh, no, no. It's and there's no such thing as time over there. No. I mean, the, our, our energy, our energy bodies are totally different to the way they were 30 or 40 years ago when it was 40s was the le getting late, you know. I've seen people get naturally pregnant here without IVF, 45, 46, 47, no problem. Mm -hmm. Because your, our bodies, our vibrational bodies are different compared to what they were like 30 or 40 years yeah. ago. And it's, it's, it's amazing for us as Reiki practitioners or people who are here to help people get pregnant to be able to say that we've been a part of their journey to help them. Do you know what's amazing for me? Because because I'm all you know I'm on the internet, I'm on my Facebook and everything else, and and all the people. I mean, as you know, I've trained thousands over the years, and they're all over the country, all, all over the world, not the country. All over the world, yeah. You know, their own healing places and everything, and all the ones that they've trained, and it's just a ripple effect. That's what I was telling you before about if it's one person, one person, one stone can cause an avalanche. You know. Um, the ripple effect of one person. So I was meant to be here to affect all those people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but to see that on the on the the Facebook and all over when it's all these little Reiki babies. Like not uh, not all of them, but they don't all put the photographs up. But I see different ones and I go Reiki baby, Reiki baby, Reiki baby. You know, yeah. all grown up now, 15, 16. The very very first ones in the navy. He's in the navy, young lad. Um, but you know. You know, for the people to turn around and say, oh, you're not going to believe it, but yeah. I'm pregnant. Oh, and isn't that a job well done for you? Yeah. And especially when you get to hold the baby at the end. Yeah. I always had a photograph taken with them babies and the mother. Yeah, because you know? yeah, I love that as well. Because it's funny, I only found my board. I had a Reiki baby board that was so full of babies that I had to like, okay, where am I going to put that? Because I nearly needed another board. But it's like exactly. you now have to put the Im Im imprint in my head of all the little babies that are coming. Not even only the babies that you've helped the mom who might have been your client, but also your Reiki students who have come through your Reiki level one, level two, who are yes. now your Reiki levels, your students, uh, and they're having their babies. They, to me, are my Reiki babies too, because yes. their vibrational energy is different because of doing their Reiki, which means that their body was different to be able to house this amazing spiritual being. That's spiritual, right. yeah. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's yeah. lovely to be able to, thankfully, have clients and have our students who know what we know and are able to teach their children from now instead of what I'm 35, 30, 30, 30 odd when I started going on my healing journey where all these new kids and all these new babies are all learning how to meditate now. Yeah. They're small. You know that yeah. it's lovely that it's not, it's not, um, uh, when we had it, we were afraid to talk about it. I was afraid because my, somebody might, you know, think that you are nuts or whatever. Now yeah. it's so known. Oh, it's so open now, isn't it? Yeah, it's so open. And that's, that's the great part of it that it's now you see it going on that, you know, like me, I'm, I'm doing it since 2012, only nine years. You're doing it this length of time. You know that you can see the difference change and the people changing from the time that you started. It's not, everybody knows about Reiki now. Everybody knows about Ooh. spiritual healing. Yeah. yeah. 
back, back, you know, in the beginning, I uh, did say, uh, well, I mentioned it to me, sister. Yeah. You know, that I went for late yet. You know that? Yeah. Come on, for God's sake, come yeah. out. It's like going back into the dark ages, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, honour your divinity, honour who you are, and don't be frightened of saying what you do and how amazing it is and 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 always ask, keep asking. I, like me now, I, I put out my request there a couple of weeks back to the guides and I'm saying, need more knowledge, understanding and clarity. Yeah. As if you don't know enough, you know what I mean? But yeah. we know we're only scrapping the surface. And it's like, so I'll trust what you, you guide me to, you know. Jeez. Yeah, and it's like manifestation. We were talking about that um, uh, recently yeah. where man you're mas manifesting something. So you're saying, I really deserve to have this and I know I already have it. It's like you bring it in, you say, I see myself in this new car. I'm seeing myself in this new car. And it's actually happening so quick compared to what it would have been like 10 years ago when you were manifesting yeah. it because the energy has shifted so quickly now. Yeah. That manifestation of manifesting something, you literally don't think about it and you'll go, like I had an experience only recently, a friend of mine, we go for our walks and I was on my uh, on my way, she messaged me, she said, oh, I'm after running out of paracetamol, can you give me some paracetamol? And I said, yeah. So when I took the paracetamol out of the box, underneath there was, I had like 12 boxes of lunch bags and I said, I'll give her a box of lunch bags, sure, I don't need 12 boxes. And as I drove up to her and to pull up into the car, I said, there's the paracetamol and by the way, there's a box of lunch bags. And she's like, Oh my God, I just put out to the universe two minutes ago. I have no lunch bags. And it like literally, well, as she drove up, she said, she goes, I have to go into Tesco's afterwards to get the lunch bags. And she said, Hazel, I literally taught that two minutes ago. So she said, like, the power of t the manifesting your thoughts, I want it now. And I expect that the universe is going to provide it for me. It's always provided. It's yeah. just that we didn't trust. And our words are very, very powerful. Now, yeah. the words that you can use now is I am. I am. I am abundant. As though it's already happened, you know, uh, I am successful in the business. I am this, I am that. Or putting it out to the universe. Um, like when we had the um, the recession, yeah. the last one, you know, yeah. and lots of people was out of work and nobody's houses were selling. There wasn't a lot of money going around, you know. And um, people used to say to me, Ethel, you know, you're always booted out. There's people coming left, right, and centre. My phone was hopping up the hook. You know, my, my weekend was just like nonstop. Um, how do you do it? And I said, because I put it out to the universe. Yeah, and I you know, know the universe. I know, like I know, it's going to ha it happen. I, I I am very very busy. Even though probably at that moment I wasn't busy, yeah. I would say I'm very busy. People are beating a pathway to my door. My phone never stops. And my Jesus, everything I was saying, that's what was happening. Yeah. After that, it would start with the ball rolling. And so no, no such a thing as recession in our house because it was always abundance. Everything turned up at the, the right time. Um, do you ever remember me telling you about the one that I'm really, I loved it was me, me uh, the conservatory, you know, yeah. back in the early days. And I was doing the healing in my living room. Yeah, I remember and, you saying uh, that healing people on your knees on people were on the sofa and you were just had no them. bed, you know, I had no no healing bed at the time. And I used to put them on the city. This was like when it first started off. And I'd be kneeling, I mean my knees was knackered, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'd be walking around on my knees doing my positions, yeah. you know, and doing the healing. But anyway, um, so this then I got uh, I got promoted with a bed <laughs> yeah. in my living room. So I got a couch, I was delighted with myself. Yeah. Well, you know, I was at the house spotless, you know, and the people come in, the lovely smells of the oils and everything, and a couple of candles burning, and let them, you know, listen to the music, and then I do my stuff, you know. Did they know that they had an entourage around them? You know, yeah, yeah, all yeah. the guys. And and, um, and then uh, one day I was just stared now, just finished a session, and this man it was, it just finished, and he says, "What are you thinking about, Apple?" I said, "I could do it my own healing room." Because, you know, when the kids come home from school, they're creeping around upstairs, yeah, yeah, frightened yeah. of yeah. creeping floorboards, you know, yeah. um, when people come in and don't want them to disturb them and all that. And I said, I really could do it in my own healing place, you know. So he says, and where would you have it? I said, I'd love it at the back. Well, obviously, I'm in, I'm in here. I, you know, I've been in, in the house, not gone out in years. So we said, uh, right. So he pulls back the curtain. I'm stood there with him. And he says, where would you have it? I said, right across there the back and uh, it says right so I want you to visualize where you would have your bed and I went right so I am I'm seeing it in my mind's eye you know 
on the bed would be there and the couch would be over there for the person that come with that person and uh, and so on and so on and what color would you have it oh, i'd have peach peach and cream you yeah. know it was all it was all being created in the head yeah. he says right now come with me so we go outside he says right and i'm stood on my patio which was right outside and he says you know i'll draw from the universe now that's the first time i had ever heard those words you know, I know you, you, you've heard, ask and it, you shall receive. And ask yeah. and it, and all that. No, I'm talking about the universe. When he, when he said the universe, I went, what do you mean? He says, well, your energy. And when you put that energy out to the universe, what you want, he says, and you let it go, order up and leave it, you will manifest it. Yeah. It's just not that easy. You know, like, yeah, right. He said, come on. But act as though it's going to happen. And I says, how? He says, shift all those. I had all pots around the edges full yeah. of plants. He says, get rid of all of them. So I got rid of them all while he was there. He said, right, I'm shoving them on one side. Now here you are. He gave me a brush. Sweep it. And I did. I thought, right, if anybody see me now, they think I'm right there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he says, and now ask the universe. Now I'm ready. Send it, please. Thank you yeah. very much. And leave it. And I'm like, Okay, but I did it. Yeah. And he went, I never seen that man again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He was one of them where it was, it was it, it, it lived miles away, but I never seen him here again. He went to others closer to home. Yeah. Well, he was sent to me for a reason, obviously. Yeah. And so um, to make you think those thoughts, to make you put it out there and, and it's still all yeah. attraction, you know. And yeah. I went came back in and I went, right. So I am loving my healing room. I'm visualizing it in my mind's eye and I'm going to have this and I'm going to have that. It's quite a long story short then. I was, uh, got the money together, uh, what, by hook or by crook, got it together and worked my socks off for it. And um, these two guys came in for a healing session, father and son. And I've been looking for quote, you know, for this conservatory. And uh, had done a few, but these two came in. You know, what you say after a healing session, someone, how are you, lads? You know, what, what you'll do in an hour at work? Do? What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> We're builders. What kind of building? Uh, outhouses, conservatories. And I went, ping. You know, it was like right in front of me. I said, so can you give me a quote for this? And it was much better than all the others, you know. So you see, they were sent in my door. Yeah. Like the universe was saying, here, yeah. Now we're giving you the tools. Now we're giving you the, you know, uh, the people. And they um, built it. And then it was there, there, you know. And then I was doing the healing room in the living room. And um, this guy says to me, uh, just got off the bed. And he says, uh, going off now to help me dad. Oh, I says, what is he doing? He says, well, he's got a place in Oldham. He, 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 tiles you know he's got a, a factory with tiles and he lays tiles and i went really he said why do you want some <laughs> look in there it was brand new so so he we had a deal he came for a few sessions and his father done me tiles that was done for free yeah and the same with the blinds the blinds that i had visualized everything everything turned up in that room yeah how and that all happened within three months because it's like you putting out that, like the ordering out the universe and the universe you're creating is providing it. Yeah. You're ordering it, you create it, and you send it. And yeah. you don't start looking, is it, is it coming? Is it yeah. coming? No. Yeah, yeah. You order up like you would out of a catalogue. Do you remember years ago, yeah. you would order up out of a catalogue and you'd place your order and you'd say, right, thank you very much. And, and no you know it's going it. to come. Yeah. You know, well, that's, that's it. Whereas today, a lot of the young ones go, ah, well, uh, worrying about how it's going to get there it's not your job to worry about that yeah, yeah. what's my job to worry about where's the money coming from to pay for that the guides sent the people to me yeah because they booked my work tenfold yeah because it's like so, you're, you're putting out your order and saying okay you make it happen for me then your phone starts ringing all your clients start to come you fill up your weekends you said and that's the money that's then put away to have that so it's not as if the guys are going to come and plonk a new conservatory down and there it is it's, it's no it's, no what i would do would i was doing the work and i'd put my money to one side at the end of every month I, I'd, I'd got a loan to have it done yeah uh, credit union you know and i'd put the money to one side our john had got it for me you know and i'd give it to him at the end of every month 
didn't borrow a penny off anybody, just yes. just that. And do you know, and I worked my socks off, and I was saying to the guy, all right, so um, if this is all happening, well, as they did from day one, he yeah. sent it off, the knowledge, the, the place, everything and um I've never it's like looked back. It, it's like making that space available I, I did say that on one of my last posts where you know for people who are only new at it and who are coming at it from uh, only awakening in the last year and last whatever year and a half they you have to make the space available for your guide so if you give yourself a little sacred space where you can go and sit and talk to your guides be able to go and actually make a place where you, yeah yeah and and it means not only are you creating that little sacred space for you to be able to connect in with the, your guides in that way but also be, be able to order up and do what you need to do and i mean you, you can do it in your car obviously but you, you can do it anywhere but it's always better i feel that it's it, when you really believe in here that you are you already have it whatever it is that you want you already have it and you know that the universe is going to provide and like say for instance where you might have uh, somebody who comes who who's looking for a baby and they say I say imagine yourself on a five um uh, a five story building you're standing there with a boomerang and you're saying I want this baby I deserve this baby and I'm ready for this baby you throw out the boomerang but then they get two or three weeks two or three months in and the, the period comes and the period comes and they go off oh, they're not waiting for this boomerang and they go down yeah okay, um, and you're missing and they, it and you miss the boomerang when it comes back because everything yeah. only happens in divine time and it doesn't happen the way you want it to happen it comes yeah. only when you're ready for it to, for and your for, belief and your, your belief. belief yeah you and know, if you really believe no it saying, it's no good saying oh oh i'd love that uh such a thing whatever it is oh i'd love that now it's coming the fact that you put that desire and that feeling yeah. into it, it's the feeling and the imagination. Oh, that's lovely that. But the moment that you turn around and say, um, uh, when, when I, I get the money, yeah. When I get, and, uh, and oh, how am I going to pay for that? And, uh, now you've cancelled your order straight away. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not trusting the, uh, the universe. Yeah. It's not your job to worry about how to get it to you. It's your job to just believe trust yeah. let it go yeah the analogy we were only talking about this the other night on a zoom a load of ladies I, I was on a zoom with and um, i was explaining all this to them and uh, i says imagine yourself when you go into a restaurant and you order up a meal and you're looking at the menu and you say i'll have that 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 and that oh and that as well thank you very much so you place your order now you're not going in there every five minutes to, to the cook and saying is it ready is it coming is it you know it's going to be put in front of you. Yeah. Well, that's the same way that you should order up from the universe. Whatever it is that you want. But the moment you start, ah, is it come? it's not coming out. Well, really, when you think about it, I can't afford it. Yeah, it's the moment that it, it's like... It could have been around the corner on its way to you and you've blocked it. Yeah, it's like getting it's up from the restaurant it. and walking out before the meal like you even got there. Exactly. <laughs> All down the years, ever since, like I said to you, from day one when I turned around and I said, you know, the, the Jesus fella, you know, I said, right, handing it all over to you now. I'm not, no time to worry about all that other crap. Yeah. You sort that out and I'll do this. I'm doing your job, so I can't do it all. So yeah. that's exactly how it was. And uh, and it's a great, you have a great relationship with the spiritual ones, don't you? Yeah. See, people don't realise, we, we treat them like, fam well, they are family, aren't they? Yeah. I used to sit down after a Reiki weekend and say, bye, Jesus, you're not have to excel yourselves. It was amazing. And uh, if that was good, what are you going to do the next time? And they would always top it, you know. Because you think, because I, I know the experience that I had through my Reiki experiences with my doing Reiki courses, where sometimes I, I'd have to come in afterwards and we sit there and go, oh my God, did that, that happen? happen? And then I'd be getting on to you because you're my teacher. And I'd be like, okay, well, this happened, that happened, this. And then you'd be like, oh, they really yeah. tree in the deep end today. I'm like, what? How come you didn't warn me about this? But the whole thing is, that's the learning. They, have, they only give you what you can handle. And I've had yeah. so many experiences out there where, you know, some experiences that I never, I never had, you know, where I got the movers, where I got people who were channeling. I remember one... Um, I, I was like, like you, obviously you're able to connect in, you're able to see color, you're able to know, just have a knowing that your guides are there on your side, but you have that gift to be able seeing, to see, see color. I don't see that. So I have to so, sometimes don't trust myself and I'm asking you, what do you see? 
Well, you see it. You know, what do you see if you're looking at me? Remember the experience that we had when um, I started doing light language first and channeling first, and I came over that weekend for you to you. Was I think it was helping out on a Reiki weekend. And at that point, I had started channeling light language. I started having all these amazing other gifts and experiences were coming in. And I was looking yeah. at you because I didn't really know. I just knew what my heart was telling me, that I'm doing this for the right reason, that I'm doing this to help others. You can give me whatever you feel I'm ready for. But I didn't know what exactly was happening. I was trusting totally in them. Yeah. And I remember going to you and you said, uh, I remember sitting on your Reiki bed out the back there and David, uh, one of your other students was there and you said, Hazel, do you want to say something or, you know, because there's all these balls of light all over your head yeah. <laughs> getting ready. And I was like, what? And the minute that you sort of gave me that permission, I said, blah, 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 blah. all the light language came out, you remember? Yeah. But, but again, I looked to you because I didn't really trust myself. I, I knew that I was getting the, these experiences and knew that I was, uh, these were, not something that I was doing out of, oh, look at me. It was something that was coming through me. What it is, you see, when people start speaking, the, the, the girls out there that are coming through with, with the Reiki and some of them are doing it more or less straight away, light language, singing light language and everything. And what, what's actually happening there is when there's a group of people, when that person comes out with light language, they're actually affecting their DNA and they're awakening memories in the, DNA, the person's body, yeah. you know, in the cells. and so. It's the light language that's communicating with the people and the bodies, you know, and, and then and all of a sudden they start to awaken doing stuff different. So have you ever found that when you've yeah. had a, when you've been doing your channeling? Yeah, because your, it's, 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 it's done through tone and sound. And because I was a singer coming in before I ever started doing Reiki, I was a singer. Yeah. So I, I, have my, I have a good voice. But when I would yeah. start doing um, light language on people, when I started off very early on the start, it was, it was all tone. It was like yeah. the Morse coding. It was a sound. And yeah. I would have to have, I worked with that a lot on myself first because I would never do it on other people first before I tested it out with myself. And I tested it with my friends, my close friends and my Reiki circle before I then started doing it on my clients. So it was again, a gradual buildup of it. To get to the point here, like I would never, when I started off in 2012, um, I didn't start channeling till later on, two or three years later than that. When I started off doing the channeling part of it, I had to test it out in order to get the validations for myself before I really stepped into using it. And when I, I do it on my clients now, when I use tone and language now, I see the experiences of the client on the bed, how they react the moment that the light language comes in. So I know it's something that's coming through me as the channel. It's not Hazel doing it. It's being brought through me as the channel. It's through you for somebody yeah. else. Yeah. And I, I see it. Hey, can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah. I've, just got, I've just got a message on there saying, plug in your PC, because I moved it from the other room. Oh, did it? Oh, yeah. Well, plug it in. Plug it in. I'll pause it. I'll pause it. Yeah. Sorry, we're having a few technical difficulties there with computers, me, me and Ethel. And anyone out there who knows us, between Ethel and her printer and me and my computer, we're, we're so not good with um, anything to do with tech, uh, the techie part of uh, it. But look, we're all learning, especially in the last few years um, of the new way of teaching people, obviously through platforms and social media, we have to learn very fast. So when we're talking about um, the channeling, we're talking about tone, light language, all of those amazing things that are happening to all of the new, newer students that are coming in who are being tuned into the Reiki um, energy or tuned into source. These people are having these um, newer gifts as such that are coming with like, them. like um, some do automatic writing. Yeah. They've never done anything like that before. Yeah. People like, do you remember Tom? He done uh, all he the poetry. Poetry and everything. That all came overnight and he couldn't even um, write, I think yeah. he said at one stage. Well, here he was writing all these, uh, and still is it to this day, you know, poems yeah. and beautiful books written. Um, but they, a lot of them have varied gifts, you know, like, as you say, light language, movers, uh, deep, 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 amazing healing going on on all levels, you know. Yeah. The only thing is that you have to say to people is just trust. Yeah. Get what you're ready for, not, not anybody else. So, and just say for um, example, 
for people, new people that are coming in and, you know, new, some of our new viewers who are only connecting in the last few months because of what's going on in the world and are looking out there for something else because they are spiritually awakening or are, are having discernment and watching stuff that's going on in the world at the moment and thinking, oh, this doesn't feel right to me. And they're wanting to now go down their spiritual journey or are awakening um, to new things like angels and the spirit side of things and healing and all of those bring it on bring, bring it on but what would you say to people who are on starting off on their journey as such now because in the in the experience that we're having now at the moment because we're in lockdown and restrictions where they can't go and be part of joining a reiki course where they're being attuned to the energy how well, they've all got computers haven't they so yeah. uh, on the phones and that so i would suggest that these start all little zooms going little group you know and getting discussions going, but also to, to take the time that they're in and to meditate, to connect with their inner guides. Even if they don't get anything back, just know that they're listening to everything. You've got a whole team behind you. Yeah. And um, and if you could only see what's behind you, it's absolutely nothing to be frightened of. All this business ghosts and all, it's a load of crap. You know, it's, it's just, you, you just don't know what you're missing. And uh, say, say for instance, best friend that you'll ever have. Say for instance, people out there who are not really sure of how to meditate or afraid to meditate, or what would your um, give a little bit of advice on just a simple form of meditation? What would you What would you give them? I would say just focus on your in breath and your out breath. The breath, the sacred breath, is the God within you, and that will take you. You'll only get even in meditation, you'll only get a vision. If you're meant to, you could be yeah. there forever yeah. and you, you not get a vision. People think that they, they start to expect certain things. No, yeah. you just wait. You just use, you, you make yourself available, meditate, contemplate, and uh, ask questions within. Always know that there's somebody listening. And then out of nowhere, you're, you're sitting there with your eyes closed and it's dark, you know, and then all of a sudden you might get a pinpoint of light. Um, Go towards. Imagine that you're in the front, the front of a little spaceship, yeah. And you're flying through space, but you're going up to that pinpoint of light, you know, and just think yourself there, yeah. And before you know it, then you might start seeing people or your teacher or whatever. But you have to make yourself available for if if, if they're doing Reiki and they're coming into Reiki, but well, all the guys have gotten. To that moment in time so they're ready they're ready yeah. so they've just got to trust you know? yeah and for people who oh, are man. out there at the moment because they can't um turn up to do reiki courses like say for us with for instance with us because we're in restrictions and we can't physically do reiki courses the best way for them to make themselves um go within sit at the moment take a little bit of time and i try to t t t tell people that it's all about practice it's not something that in instantly happens it's like going to the gym no. you've got to get your muscles working you got mm. to get your your practice in and the yes. more you do it, the more you become comfortable sitting in that space, the more you, the little bit by little bit, you're going to get in your meditations that then you start to believe, oh my God, I got that last night. Then you'll want to come back the next day to do it because you're getting somewhere. It's a practice. It's not something that happens overnight. Yeah. If you find that little space in your house where you call it your space, whether yeah. it's a little box bedroom or your attic, whatever, yeah. And the more you do that, the more you build your frequency, you higher your frequency, and yeah. then the more, and meditation, obviously. And before you know it, well, just watch this space. You get some nice advice. And it's not all uh, EBGBs, you know, all of this business, you know, looking over your shoulder. I wouldn't be bloody doing it if I had to do that. Yeah, you know, if, I, I, if I ever thought bad stuff. I, I always just say for, for my own uh, clients and people who are, are listening in, I always say if you feel like that, oh, oh God, uh, oh, I don't really feel safe or whatever, bring your angels in. Bring Visualize these angels. Vis uh, visualization is really powerful. Visualize angels in the four corners of your room. Visualize yourself in a bubble or a pyramid of light. And they, all those things are protection that we use in our meditations. And we know how to do it. But for people who are new at it, if they visualize themselves with angels around, they, nothing is going to come in and, and affect them if it's not meant for them. Well, you see, as well, if they're meant to be in this time, yeah, that's telling me they're very evolved souls. So yeah. they're ready for anything. Yeah. And I always say to people, the best teacher, because we we we've all done it, because we 
everything from like searching for this, for that, you know, in books and everything else. But the best teacher that I ever found was within me. And, and I have been told this long ago, um, when you're sitting there in the fireplace and you're, you're contemplating and you're, uh, you're meditating, go, go with it to the best friend that you'll ever have. That's your, the, yourself, the God within you. Yeah. And once you start doing that regularly, um, because I, God is part of you, do you know what I mean? Your higher self is you, is you. Yeah. you. And um, so how many times have you sat down and, and speaking inwardly, you know, how am I going to get this sorted? How am I going to get that? You know, you're talking to yourself. Are well, you actually talking to the God within? God within. Or your higher self or your oversoul, people would say, they call it. Yeah. You don't have, they all have different names, don't they? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, Look, it's, you can't yeah. get away from the fact that we're all gods. It's, it's, it's all a process, and I, I, I try to explain that to people. That's a process that happens bit by bit by bit for you. So going out there for people who are only uh, newly awakened in the last year especially, I'd uh, uh, advise you more to talk to your guides, ask your guides to come in to help you on this journey, Get ask them to bring you the knowledge, ask them to bring you also the understanding, because no point in them bringing you a book that you can't understand. Then, then validate the stuff that they're teaching you. And you will find over those uh, uh, months that you're training or you're in that process, or whether it's meditation and talking to your guides, that your guides will give you that information, whether it is through social media, whether it is through books, whether it is through people that come at you and meet on your journey, the information starts to flow in and you've got to trust. That's the biggest thing. Feel how it feels within you first when you're getting that information, whether it's through a book. Does it feel right for you? Does it resonate with you? And if it doesn't resonate with you at that moment in time, just leave it, park it, and then come back to it. Because yeah. it's always a process that is only really your personal journey and for you. And I've seen that over my years. You've seen that over yours. Like if I had it done, if I if I had gotten light language and channeling and all that in 2006 when I started, yeah. journey, I'd have ran away from myself because yeah. I wasn't ready for it then. So this is, and, and nobody, I'm, I'm saying that my experience of it and your experience of it, but each of us are going to have our own experiences and your guides won't give you light language if you're not ready for an angel, you know? Do you know? Yeah. But I suppose in a way, because we're, 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 we're typical Irish people, is seeing is believing and we, we don't believe in an angel unless we physically see an angel sometimes. You want oh, to be the angel. I believe one the wings. Yeah, no, I've seen all my stuff, so I, I don't need anybody to say, uh, you know, to prove it to me yeah i've seen it and, so, and that's what i said before if you held, held a gun to me head and said you know stop teaching what you're teaching uh it's this that i never take away take back what i was given yeah and my job is here to teach yeah to enlighten people to pass on my knowledge and everything else uh, and like you know you've heard the saying would you lay down your, your life yeah i would that's exactly what i would because life, nobody ever dies anyway. No one ever dies. Life is everlasting. But look at, we would talk all night, as you know. So I know. Uh, we, we, I know. we do this in two parts because we said, will we do them short or will we do them long? We said, we just keep talking and we just edit it. So we would talk. Oh, 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 yeah. Good old, yeah. And, just, and that's the whole reason for me doing these uh, interviews. That's a conversation. It's not like an interview as such. It's a conversation just so we can chat. We can uh, and we're talk. We're, we're ordinary people, we're having our own yeah. experiences and we're trying to use our experience that we've had, especially in our journey that we've had, our trials, our traumas, to be able to use those experiences to be able to teach you. And even if it is a small little bit that you learn from us about how to meditate or what Reiki is or, you know, the small little things that is, the small little bit that you take from that and what you do with it and you going forward with it. And this series for me is about using um, this platform that I have here with um, social media and doing it as a series that we talk each week to people who are true uh, spiritual healing which that's what we're talking about today with, Re with reiki we'll, we'll talk about physical healing mental and emotional healing and we'll go through the different levels of our body that we need to um look at in order for us to be at the um optimum level to be at the highest level that we can be at while we're going through this experience of um being on this earth at this most amazing time um, because it is so exciting and i'm excited for what to, what is to come even though i know there's going to be lots of awakening moments and p things that we've seen over our um over our few months and especially in the last few months of the experience that we're going through that is going to shock people and frighten people but yet awaken them very fast 
wasn't it meant to happen? It's meant to happen. And we, uh, I mean, there's, there's going to be so many more experiences coming in the next few months that people will um, question and people are going to look to people like us to be able to help them and guide them through it. So thank you so much, Ethel, for having this amazing chat. As always, I would talk all my five hours and my children would be left starving in the kitchen waiting for their <laughs> dinner. Today, uh, but look, we will I come back. Yourself. Yourself yeah. and different sisters coming over on a Friday night, yeah. and we're still sat in the same place on the Monday morning when we go. <laughs> still in the same pajamas, the same pajamas with the same <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> For sure, it wouldn't be. Look, at that's the whole thing that we this 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 experience for me. This uh, series that I'm doing, it's all about conversations, it's about the chats, it's about uh, learning through just having a very down to earth conversation that will help people on this journey. So thank you, thank you, thank you again. And I really enjoyed it. I and will I bring you. Again. No. We'll be back. <laughs> we'll do part two to twenty. <laughs> but thank you, thank you, thank you, and yeah. Namaste. Namaste. God bless.